Hey guys, I'm going to show you how easy it is to reverse an audio file in Logic and how to use reverse sounds creatively in your mix. Let's jump into it. Let's look at a bit of a classic one here, how to make a reverse cymbal. So here I have some cymbal swells that are added to this production. They sound like this. And they sound great as is, just a nice organic cymbal swell where we use mallets to swell the cymbal up. Let's say we wanted to make this sound a little bit more produced though, and we wanted to have that reverse cymbal sound rather than a mallet swell. What we need to do is cut the cymbal after the swell, so when it's ringing out. So we've got two files here, so we'll do this to both of them. So let's just cut it just slightly after where the swell hits. Let's duplicate these tracks, Command D, Command D. Now let's just copy and paste these, so Option and drag down. Now we can keep our swells here if we want and drag that back and we'll just mute them for now. Now what we need to do is convert this into a new audio file because if we don't, we're going to affect this file as well. So if you've taken this symbol, say from like the end of a drum fill and the symbol rings out, you're like, I'll just grab that symbol and reverse it. Make sure you turn this into a new audio file because if you do the next step, you will end up affecting the symbols in the drum take as well. So we right click on it and in this option here, convert to new audio file. And if that's not at the top, that might just be there because I do this often. Come down to convert, convert to new audio files. And then you have the option to rename it. So let's just call it reverse one. I spelt that wrong, but whatever. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for down here. Change this one, call it reverse <laughs> two. Okay. Now, we double click on the file, opens up the audio editor here, make sure we're in file, come over to functions and hit reverse. Now check it out, it's been reversed. Come down to the next one, click on that, functions, reverse. All right, so let's drag these back to where the reverse symbol needs to be, which is just here. Let's just put it so it goes just past the first beat and then trim that. Okay. Now let's grab our ring out on this actual symbol take here. Drag that down and we might just trim this over a touch just to avoid any potential swells with the mallets. Just get the symbol sustain and then we'll drag that back and then make sure you have X fade on up here. And then click on these and drag them over a little bit and we get a nice crossfade. Well, let's have a listen to what this sounds like. So it's a nice, even, smooth reverse cymbal sound. Let's hear it in the mix. We might make our swell a little bit shorter. Trim the starts off, add a bit of a fade in. Sounds pretty cool. And then if you wanted to make that sound even smoother, you could maybe just add a little bit of reverbs. I'm just gonna use Valhalla Vintage Verb and just do like a bright hall. So if you have a drum take where the cymbals ring out, you can just grab that cymbal, turn it into a new audio file, and then reverse it and create a reverse symbol effect to add some impact or anticipation leading up into a new section. Okay, let's have a look at another way we can use some reverse effects. So there's some basic block piano chords through the pre-chorus of this song. And what can sound really cool is if we reverse those so they suck up into the next hit. So I'll show you what I mean. So here's our piano, just some MIDI, sounds like this. Plain old block chords there that sound nice, but we could add some more effect to this by reversing them. So what we're going to do, because this is a MIDI track, we only want for the pre-chorus up to the chorus. So we're going to duplicate this for a sec. Option, drag, copy, paste it. Let's just cut this here. Okay, now we're going to bounce this in place, Control B. Make sure include audio tail and file, include audio tail and region, and include volume pan automation are all selected, and then hit OK. Now, 
we can get rid of this. So there's our piano. So let's cut these. We can hold down Command Option and do even cuts all the way along. And then double click, open the audio editor, functions, reverse, next one, functions, reverse, and do this for all of these hits. Okay, now you can see at the front, there's a little bit of a transient here. So what I like to do is drag these back a touch and then add a fade. And this emphasizes the swell as well. So now what we're going to get is the chord hit and then it's going to swell up at the end and then hit the next chord. Sounds like this. Better days are golden. I'm here simply open. Man stuck set on you. Out here in the open. Grounded out for Corbin. I still think it all through. That sounds pretty cool and we had the reverse symbol and that reverse chord just there leading up into the chorus which sounded really nice. Okay, so that's one way you could use some reverse effects like piano chords. You could do the same if you had a bass that's just ringing out notes. You could let the bass swell up into the next bass hit. Just anything that has long sustained chords or ring outs, you can do this effect and it sounds really nice. Even just guitar chords that are ringing out, reversing them into the next chord hit can sound really cool. All right, this last one's pretty cool. We're gonna have a look at making a reverse reverb effect on our vocals. You can use this in a lot of creative ways, even just like ramping up into a vocal take or creating a kind of spooky kind of effect to your vocal. So what I wanna do here is add a bit of a reverse reverb effect leading up into our vocal line here. And the same here coming up into this phrase here. So I need to bounce this in place with all the effects. So I've cut the ins and the outs here, and I'm just gonna press Control B and make sure bypass effects is unchecked. And then these bottom three are checked and then hit okay. Now that's rendered our vocal in place with all of the plugins that we had on it. So what we wanna do next is add a reverb to our vocal. So I'm gonna use Valhalla Vintage Verb, probably go of about three seconds, mix 100%, and I'm gonna use the smooth plate and just take out a bit of the lows. 500 hertz and see how that sounds. I want this to be brightish, not too muddy sounding. So that's why we do a bit of a cut there on the low frequencies. Now, the next thing we wanna do is double click on our file, go to functions, reverse, and we're gonna flip this vocal take here. Now, because I only want to have the effect coming in on the first word here, what I'm gonna do, so this is our first word now at the end of these. That's our very first word just here. So we're gonna chop after that word, right up to the start of the next phrase up here, and then chop after that one as well. So we've just got those initial words at the start of the phrases. Now, let's just add some fades to make sure we don't get any pops or clicks. And now we're gonna render this in place. So Control B, make sure these bottom three are checked so we get all of the reverb tail and hit OK. Now that's rendered it in place with the reverb on it. Pretty, sounds pretty weird on its own. So now double click on that, come down to the audio editor and functions reverse. We're gonna flip it back around now. So the vocal was reversed and we put the reverb on it and now we've flipped it back around. So now our vocal's back around the right way, but the reverb tail's reversed now. So now we've got the tail coming back up and our vocals are the right way around. Now let's drag that back and line it up with the start of these phrases. So kind of something like that. Better days are golden. I'm here simply open. Man stuck set on you. Out here in the open. That sounds pretty cool. And if you didn't want the effect to cut off so quickly, you could just add some extra reverb to it. Let's just do the same reverb. Put it about 30%. Maybe go about two seconds and, and roll off some low end. We add a little bit more mix. Sounds pretty cool. And that's a really cool way of just like leading into a vocal take. You could shorten these up, you could trim them, make them as long as you want, add a fade. Now let's do the same thing again, but 
we'll do the effect for the whole take and see what it sounds like. So we've got our vocals, let's flip them, reverse. Let's just use the same reverb we used before. So we drag that over. What we might do for this one, cause we're doing a lot more words, let's shorten the reverb up. Let's make it like one and a half seconds. Let's bounce this in place, control B, and then double click on our affected vocal here and flip it back around, reverse. Now let's see if we can try and line this up a little bit. Try something like that. And that sounds pretty cool too. You could have that subtly mixed in or you could use it as a really dramatic effect um, if you're trying to just add some kind of atmosphere to a section too, like it does have a creepy kind of effect about it. And that's just a couple of ways of using reverse effects. And you can grab anything and muck around with reversing it. And you could do the same thing with like a lead guitar or a lead piano riff. And you could muck around with flipping it and adding reverb to it and then flipping it back and then layering it in with the actual lead to get some really cool effects going on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and feel inspired to now go and create some interesting reverse effects in your mixes. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell. Leave a comment, let me know what you thought of the video. And if you have any suggestions of something you'd like to see me cover, drop it down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.